Okay, now the great thing about After Effects is that it really works really well with uh, Cinema 4D. In fact, the newest version of uh, After Effects is going to have a what's called Cinema 4D Lite kind of built into it. So the motion graphics industry is really pushing uh, hard, even the software developers, in incorporating these two softwares together. Um, so for our purposes, what I want us to do for the end of the semester is to everyone to create a basic reel, which is, uh, you know, putting your video projects, even your still projects that you've done together in one portfolio of uh, animated piece. And we'll compile all that together in After Effects. For our purposes today, um, what we can do to start is, uh, it's first of all, it's best if you can locate, if you can put all of your files that you want to use, the audio files, the video files, everything you've done into a single folder so it's easier to remember. If you don't do that, you can always compile them afterwards, which we'll talk about as well. All right, so first thing we do is to uh, just import some files. Uh, and in this case, uh, I've just got a folder uh, on the desktop that's got some footage in here. So I'm going to bring in both my, um, my video files, these two movies first. Actually, I can bring in all of these files at once. Uh, I have a, an audio file and I have two video files that I'm going to bring in. Uh, the video files are renderings that I've done in Cinema 4D. Uh, so uh, what we have here then, you, it ends up, when you drop it in, it's going to end up in this little uh, palette that shows you all of your different files, this sort of organization file here. Typically what I do to, to, to start out is we need to create a composition. And in order to do that, the easiest way is just to grab one of your video files, drag it down to this little icon right here to make a composition. And what it will do is automatically bring in the video, uh, you know, create a palette, uh, a, a, view f uh, a view frame that's based on the dimensions of your video. And we see it here, and then you also see this is the timeline down below. It sort of indicates the, the length of the video. So if we were to play this out, if you, if you can just, you just hit spacebar, it takes a little minute to render. See the green line that goes across? Uh, it's going to be rendering, and then it'll play at full speed after that. Now, uh, sometimes if you have really complicated video footage or very large video footage, it will play really slow and sort of choppy, okay? So what you can do, what I typically do is you can change the resolution right below here. So this is a resolution. Uh, you can do full, half, a third, a quarter. I tend to, when I'm editing, I tend to stick to a half just because it, what it does is it gives you a, a half of the size of the file. It sort of adds, you know, it subtracts pixels so that it plays faster in your playback. You can probably watch it at full view. Like if I watch this at full full resolution, you see it's taking longer to render that little green line going across. It has to render out completely first, and now it's getting stuck. Okay, so you see that. So this is this is something we want to have a fast a playback or a fast preview when we're rendering here. That's already way too long for my taste. So I'm going to switch back to just half. Okay. Uh, and you can see that you can't, I mean, from your screen space, you, you can see a little bit of resolution difference, but it's not enough to really distract. So um, half resolution plays great. Okay, so uh, now that I have that, I can bring in another file. Uh, hit spacebar again. So I have my logo uh, that I want at the beginning. And when you, you, you can just simply drag this down below as well. So And, and just like uh, in Photoshop, um, the layers are organized in a hierarchy. So whatever's on top is going to play in, in front of whatever's below. So if I take this logo test, you see they're both oriented together right now. They start at the beginning together. If I put this logo test above it, then you see that's oriented first, right? So if I play this now, it's going to play my logo, and then when it gets to the end of that, it's going to be in the middle of that other animation, okay? So what we need to do here is just simply... Um, move this. So we're going to take this guy and you can just click and drag it and move it over. And now you can see that, see how the animation is changing because I'm moving it. You can see it sort of in that place. Just line it up with the other one so that when one of them stops, this one stops, the other one starts. Okay. So you, you're arranging a sequence of, of your clips, just butting them back to back. But of course, they're not directly next to each other. You can layer them like this, sort of oriented one above the next. Okay. So when we play this out, it's just going to continue looping uh, for whatever you have in your, in your preview scene. Okay. Now, uh, the other thing is that uh, right now it took, when I made a composition with that first movie, it took however many frames I had and it made that the length of the composition. So now that I've sort of dragged these next to each other to make a longer piece, I need to change the length of my composition. So I'm just going to go up to Composition and then um, Composition Settings. And here, down below, you can see the duration is uh, six seconds, 
And I'm just going to change this to 10 seconds because that's what I want for my uh, that's for my video. Okay, and when you do this now, if I this little icon below, if you drag this, you can see a longer preview. You can see it goes all the way to 10 seconds, and I have a little bit of space left over at the end. Whatever, if you don't have anything filled in that space, it's just going to be black. Okay, so uh, and that's that's good sometimes. Sometimes we want to start out with black, fade into a video, and then fade back out to black again. So if there's nothing there, it's just going to be it's just going to be black. Um, I am recording, aren't I? Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't see the icon above. Okay, so, um, and then the last thing is that, um, so, you know, I'd like to start with a little bit of black and then end with a little bit of black. So what you can do is you can actually select both of these. I'm going to select the logo movie and the other movie together just by hitting the shift key. Select both of those and you can just click them and drag them and move them. So I'm going to drag it kind of in the middle of my composition now. And here you can see at the beginning, I'm going to start with black. It's going to intro. Uh, it will play through my other part of the movie, and then uh, it should go to black again for a little bit uh, before the movie ends. It's going to take a minute to render, and there we go. Okay, so I give myself a little bit of buffer on either side that I can kind of manipulate those sort of forms. Okay, let's talk a little bit. So, that, so essentially, when you're arranging your clips, that's basically it. You're going to just kind of bring them into your composition, change the duration of the time, okay, and then arrange them accordingly how you want them to uh, to be arranged. Uh, it, just by simply moving them in order or stacking them accordingly. Okay, um, and again, if one is if one is overlapping another one, it's you're not going to see it. It's going to cut it off. Okay, so that's another way that you can control the clips. If you just want a section of a clip, just put it underneath another one, and it will play the top one. You'll see the top one first, and then whatever stacks below will be in view. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about manipulating these a little bit. All right. Now, I like the color of this one, but I want to make it, I want to change it just a little bit. If you want to alter the color, the contrast, uh, any of those sort of elements, if you want to flip the colors or anything like that, you can apply different effects to them. And to do this, what you do is to create an adjustment layer, okay? You can apply effect directly to your video, but it's easier if you, you change it to an adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is just like in Photoshop. If you have an adjustment layer, you manipulate that layer, which is a copy of your, of your file, and then it, it keeps your original. So if you ever want to go back in between them, or if you want to have a difference between them, you can do that. So click on whatever one you want to do. For this case, it's going to be the logo test. I'm going to go up to effect, uh, I'm sorry, go up to layer and create a new uh, adjustment layer. Okay, and then when I do that, you see what happens? It stacks another one on top, all right? It starts at the beginning and it goes through. If you want to shorten this down, you can just grab the end of it and shrink it down to uh, you know, the, if you hit shift, it'll line up directly with what the end of your clip is. Okay, so I can do that on either side here, just sort of adjust it to where I'm at. And then now that I have an adjustment layer, I can select that and apply an effect to it. So in this case, what I want to do here is, you know, there's a million different effects, okay? So the, the easiest thing to do here is just to play with this, kind of experiment with what these things do. Some of them are pretty obvious, others are not. Uh, color correction is, is what I'm going to start with. There's a ton of different types of things you can do. Brightness and contrast, you can do channel mixing, color balance, just like in Photoshop. A lot of these things are exactly the same as how you would use them in Photoshop. Hue and saturation is just like Photoshop, the levels. Um, I'm going to use photo filter. I like this one because it allows you to make some interesting adjustments. So I'm going to click photo filter. Uh, the, the default one is the warming filter, but I'm actually going to cool this down. Uh, and I'm going to make a, so you can choose any of these, so here's the cooling filter, you see it's changing the color ever so slightly. Uh, you can, this is the color that it's applying as a layer. And then you can, if you grab, if you click and, and move to the left and the right, you can control the, how much you want it to affect. So here's 100%, which is really blue, and you know, here's 15%, that's not much at all. So you can kind of control that. The other thing you can do, if you want to choose your own color, you can click on custom, and then, you can click here and choose whatever color you want. So I'm going to go for a little bit more kind of a grayish blue like this, I guess, right here. And apply that and then uh, give it a little bit more effect. And we should be able to get this kind of cold steel like, there we go, that kind of a cold steel like color. Okay. Uh, and so here you can, you can really play around. You can put multiple different effects onto one adjustment layer. Okay. So, for example, if I wanted, if I, that one's all set how I want it, I can also, um, you know, do something like, um, I don't know, brightness and contrast, for example, and I can just maybe make it a little bit more contrasty. 
or maybe a little less contrasty. I don't know. You can adjust that a little bit. So that, that gives you some options as well. So you can have multiple different effects onto one adjustment layer. Now the cool thing is, is that uh, you see on the left side in this palette down below, which, which is our uh, composition palette, uh, there's little eyeballs here. If we turn it off, it will hide the adjustment layer. So if I turn that off, you can see what it was originally, and this is after that's been applied. So this is really helpful when you're starting to play around with those different effects. If you don't like the adjustment layer, you can just delete it and start another one. Uh, so that's, that's uh, one easy way to do that. And then uh, the thing to consider is this, let's say I want to make another adjustment to this uh, file down here. Uh, again, just go up to layer, uh, adjustment layer. Uh, I'm going to take this one and put it below. I'm going to arrange this underneath above the, uh, the movie, but below the other one because I don't want the two of those to interrupt each other. Okay, So I'm just going to drag this over here like here and uh, I'll let that one spill out. So in this case, then, I can, I can add another adjustment layer. <clears throat> and again, whatever effect you, th you find is interesting uh, could be really appropriate. Um, let's see, like... Could invert it. How about that? There you go. Now we have uh, the, the colors like a negative image. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So, um, so and you can play around with that. You can also control with like some of these. You can really control how they blend together. Just click on these tabs to see. Uh, you can have it be a little bit or a lot. You know, you can have it be slightly inverted or you know however you want to play with it around. So that's that's a possibility. We'll just keep that for now. Um, Okay, so now I've made some adjustments. I can play this out again to see how it looks. Uh, it looks kind of interesting. It looked a little bit better in its original state, but I'll leave it for, for our purposes today. Uh, so there we go. There's our, there's our animation, how we like it. Okay, the other thing we can do here is um, we can add some text. Uh, and uh, this is important. Uh, the two-dimensional text sometimes is, is really appropriate for these, these compositions, I think. So, for example, if I wanted to create... Um, I'd like to label these things right here. So, for example, if I if I wanted to add a text layer, all you do is go up to Layer, New, and then Text, and uh, and then here you can just type whatever you want wherever you want it. So here I'll just I'm going to put this in, and uh, I want to make this black. I guess make the type black. There we go. Okay, I'll call this. Rigid body. I hear a lot of clicking. I hope you guys are paying attention out there. Um, there, I'll do that there. And then if I do another one, do another layer with text. Here we go. And I'll call this soft body. All right. Okay, so here's, here's the two things that I want to happen. I want to label, this is a rigid body. You know, Remember the Dynamics uh, simulation tabs that we did in Cinema 4D? So this one has a rigid body on it, and this one has a soft body. So it'll just be a way that I can label these things. And then uh, here what I can do is I can have these pop up at different, at different points. So this is the soft body. I'll have that one at the end, and I'll have the rigid body kind of at the beginning. All right. So And then you can arrange these things however you like. Um, if I hit play now, you can see it goes through my name. We get a start of that. Pops up rigid body, and then the other one pops up soft body. So I've labeled both of those. Okay. So and you can have the text kind of in, in any of those sort of places, any of those sort of forms. All right. Um, last thing that we can consider here is uh, the audio. Okay. Um, audio uh, is going to be um, basically the same sort of way. The only difference here, so you take the audio, you can just, I, so what I did is I just have a, a song that I had in my iTunes. I copied and pasted it to the folder that I wanted to work in, so just put the mp3 in that file instead of trying to navigate through the, iPhone, the iTunes library. Uh, and, um, and I'm just going to drag this down below, okay? And what it's going to do is this, you can, you see there's a little uh, speaker here with audio. You can click that on and off to preview it or not. Uh, you can open it up and you can see um, the decibel level that you're working with. I'm just going to make this instead of zero. The default is zero so it doesn't blow out your eardrums. I'm just going to make it one. And then um, the waveform, if you want to manipulate the waveform, you can do that as well. You can apply audio effects to this waveform. So if anyone is uh, familiar with working with audio, uh, this would be a way that you can manipulate it there. I'm not going to do any manipulations today. I'm just going to keep this as simple as possible. But here the thing is, and again, you can layer audio. 
you can control you know, the levels, you can do all those sort of things working back and forth. Uh, in order to preview the audio though, we have to go up to this preview palette. Well, first of all, go to composition and uh, make sure that audio is checked on, okay? And then the last thing is that we want to um, preview the audio. So if we go over here, this is a little uh, uh, preview palette. And in order to preview this, we need to select the RAM preview. The RAM preview is going to calculate everything, not just the video. If you hit the space bar, you're just going to see the video pass. If you want to hear the audio and the video together, you have to click on the RAM preview. So if we click on this, it'll take a minute. It's going to calculate everything. It'll kind of speed through. And then we can hear the audio come in. Okay? And it's just going to kind of keep looping through. And it'll start again. Okay? So this is the, you can preview that, you can watch it through, you can make sure it's lined up correctly, your space and your agreement, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, you know, that's a pretty easy way to, to bring in different footage, to layer in effects, to consider some 2D text, and then finally uh, bringing in some audio to sort of match it together. So your abstract mm -hmm. animation needs to have the title of the piece somewhere in there. It can be 3D, 3D text or it could be 2D text. It needs to have audio. And if you're rendering out more than one clip, consider how you arrange these things together in your final edit. Okay? How do we do here? 16.